So yes, thanks. Welcome to my talk. Um, this is work. Um, this work was done with uh, my students Thomas Krings, Jonas Böhr, and my advisor Tanja Schulz. I'm a PhD student at the Cognitive Systems Lab in at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. So this is about using high-dimensional electromyography or high-density electromyography for muscle computer interfaces. So one of the big advantages of muscle computer interfaces is that they allow distant sensing of finger motion or finger gestures by applying the sensors at the forearm since the main finger extensors and flexors are located at the forearm. So that makes them very well suited for body-worn computing or combination with smart glasses. And um, since they allow input through subtle finger motions without placing actual sensors at the fingers. And in future, maybe those sensors might also be integrated in textiles, which would make them even more practical. So generally, there are two main approaches how to place the sensors. One is to really find the best spot above the muscle and put the electrode right there. This is usually done in medical applications or, for example, in prosthesis research. And the other approach is to use an array-like arrangement of electrodes. Electrodes are arranged in a regular grid and then placed around the forearm. Um, that allows a fast application or detachment and is the primary approach used in HCI applications. Usually small arrays are used with 8 to 16 electrodes. So the outline of our work, we explore the use of high-density electromyography, which is basically taking this array approach um, to the next level by using an array with a large number of electrodes. We create a simple but strong baseline classifier, evaluate it in a within and cross-session context, um, show two methods to cope with the electrode shift that usually occurs if you reattach it in different sessions that you can't find exactly the same position of the, of the electrodes. And uh, finally, we also release the data set uh, to the public so everybody can play around with that. So looking at the related work, we have um, several studies for the within session case. So you use the same uh, session data for training and testing. And uh, in this case, usually quite high accuracies uh, can be reached. Um, people took different gesture sets, different number of electrodes, different actual uh, gestures and number of gestures. And for the cross-session case, there's work, for example, by Saponas here at CHI 2010 um, that tries to discriminate three classes of different uh, finger gestures. Um, but he really built a variable uh, online uh, system. And for the cross-subject case, there is a study by Samadani 2014. And they use a prototypical Mayo device uh, to discriminate 21 classes and reach an accuracy around 50%. So generally, it's hard to compare all those studies because everybody uses different gesture sets, different number of gestures, different electrode setup. But what we can see is that within session works quite well. Cross session is hard. Cross subject is even harder. Uh, this is due to um, the different anatomy of users and also um, the cross-session case is also hard because it, uh, the, the signal heavily depends on, for example, skin conductance and, and changes on a daily basis. So we use, um, as I said, high-density electromyography. Here you can see um, one of the arrays we used. So this is off-the-shelf hardware. We didn't actually build the hardware. Um, so the, um, the array has 192 electrodes and it allows um, to get an image of the signals with a high spatial resolution. So the inter-electrode distance is 10 millimeters and uh, we wrap the array around the forearm so it's uh, flexible. Here you see our setup. Number one is the, is the array which is fixed with uh, some straps to the forearm. The subject is sitting in front of a screen. He gets the stimulus, what kind of movement he needs to do in a, in a graphical way. And in parallel, we um, 
look at the signals and make sure that there are not too many artifacts or, or other distortions in there. So you can see clearly that this is uh, like far away from being mobile or even wearable. Um, I mean, this is lab hardware, uh, which is usually used in, for, for medical research. Uh, so this could be miniaturized. Uh, and I think if you don't need 192 electrodes, there might be uh, solutions readily available to miniaturize this in a, in a wearable way. So this is the gesture set we used. Uh, it's, um, s there are three subsets, the tap set, the bend set, and the multi-finger set. The tap set consists of tapping gestures, hand lying flat on the desk, and um, tapping is done. Then the bend set consists of bending uh, each finger and also pinching against the, against the thumb. And the multi-finger set has various uh, gestures involving multiple fingers, also sometimes only discriminated in the amount of force you apply. So for example, 20 is pro, uh, performing a fist without force. 21 is performing a fist with force. And the blue ones are stretching gestures. So we have 27 gestures in total, uh, including the idle gesture. And on the lower plot, you see uh, averaged um, signal uh, activation patterns of the muscles uh, over the different gestures we, we recorded. That's for one subject, one session. So in each of those plots you see, you see the complete array in each pixel is one electrode, and the color value gives you the, the, the activation, uh, muscle activation under this electrode. So in our experiment, we recorded five subjects. Uh, each of them contributed five sessions. All of the sessions were recorded on different days, and um, we didn't really try to uh, place the array in each session exactly at the same place, so we, we tried to get some variations uh, into that. And then we recorded 10 repetitions per gesture for each, uh, for each of the gestures. Of course, there are artifacts in the, in the data set, especially there are artifacts when electrode loses electrodes lose contact, that's hardly, uh, it's hard to avoid, uh, since for example, if you do a fist, your, your um, skin gets hard, and the uh, topology of your skin also changes. And I mean, the, the array is flexible, but it's not as flexible, so sometimes some electrodes lose contact. And this is the main source of, source of artifacts in there. So I'll briefly go to our classification pipeline. It's more or less a standard pipeline. We do some filtering. We then do uh, segmentation, which means um, every subject has a three-second window to perform the movement. And in this three-second window, we search for the actual uh, segment where the, where the gesture was performed. And then we do a feature extraction, which means we divide the, uh, the segment into three parts and compute the uh, root mean square on, on each of the channels and then stack those uh, windows uh, on each other to get some temporal resolution. And finally, we classify with a naive base classifier with a kernel density estimation. So the details are in the, in the paper. So now looking at the electrode shift compensation, these are two um, maps, again, of the array. This time, low activity is black. And you see it's recordings of the same gesture. Uh, of different sessions, and you clearly see that the lower session must be shifted like around two centimeters to the uh, to the right to match the the position of the upper session. Uh, yeah. We introduced two methods on how this could be done. Um, first one, the idea is to estimate the position of the ulna. The ulna is this this bone, and there are no muscles above the ulna, so this uh, leads to a black part uh, in, the, in the signals in, in the middle of the array. So the idea is to identify the ulna and shift uh, according to the position of the ulna. Uh, so we are looking for this uh, black valley. And uh, what we do is first we, we apply a penalty function so that we don't get the, the borders because we're not interested in those. We invert uh, the signals um, or the data and then apply uh, the watershed algorithm, which finds uh, watersheds and topological maps 
Uh, once we have those, we can use uh, Dijkstra's uh, shortest path algorithm to find the path with the lowest cost, or in this case, lowest energy. And this is our uh, estimate of the ulnar position. And if we do that for both sessions, uh, we get two paths like that. We take the average X possession, uh, position and then uh, shift uh, according to that. The other method is trying to estimate the centers of activity of the main extensor and flexor muscles. So the, uh, they are located right here and here. And we do that by matching a Gaussian uh, mixture model with two components to the data and then shift according to the, uh, to the means of the, of the Gaussians. So this method uh, also allows a shift in Y direction, which the Ulnar method doesn't allow. So looking at the evaluation, we first evaluate the within session case, so training and testing on the, on the same session. We do that in a leave one out cross-validation per session, reach an average accuracy of 90.4% um, uh, for the 27 classes. Typical errors that occur are uh, confusions between thumb, pinky, and idle gestures. That's mainly due to the pinky and... Uh, Thumb muscles are in parts located close to the wrist, so they are not under the area we actually uh, recorded, so it's a little bit harder to, uh, to recognize those. But in total, every gesture in was recognized correctly in the majority of cases, so there are no gestures that we can't actually recognize. So, and also the, the movements that only differ in force and of course uh, some similar motion movements uh, are sometimes confused. We also looked at the influence of the number of electrodes uh, in order to get an idea if we really get benefits from that high number of electrodes. So what we did is a feature selection based on a mutual information uh, with the labels uh, selection criterion. And you see the um, plot here that shows on the x-axis the number of electrodes used and the accuracy on the y-axis. And we see that for the, for the first 20 electrodes, roughly, we have a huge increase per if we, if we take more electrodes. And then um, between 20 and, say, about 80 or 100, we also have not so huge but uh, significant improvement. And then it after 100 electrodes, it starts to, to saturate. For the cross-session uh, evaluation, we looked at, uh, uh, we, we did a leave one, out session, uh, leave one session out cross-validation for each subject, and uh, we compared our methods for uh, estimating the electrode shift with a baseline. Uh, that means we just did the evaluation without applying any shift. Uh, so we reach about 58.9% 58 for the baseline and get around 75% for the, for the two methods. So there is no difference between the two methods. And when looking at the uh, shifts, they, which they actually estimate, they are roughly the same. So we don't get any uh, additional information from, from also being able to to shift in the Y uh, direction because all the muscles are in this direction. So it doesn't matter so much if, if we have some shift here. Uh, we also looked at what, what would be the best calibration gesture, which gives us the best shift estimates. And this is stretching out all fingers uh, means uh, we get the clearest result to estimate the different uh, the, the shifts between sessions. So what we finally did is we also looked at what we get from reducing the set of used gestures. Maybe, for example, um, if, if you really want to design uh, an interface, you probably don't use 27 or 26 different gestures. You might use five or 10. And we selected some based on common sense. We used some that we thought might be uh, well working for an interface uh, and also which are uh, easy to discriminate or well discriminable. And for the case of five gestures, for example, we almost reached 99% within session accuracy 
and an accuracy of 94.6% for the, for the cross-session case. So this decreases uh, the more gestures you, uh, you take in your set, of course. But the accuracies are, are still quite high. So to sum that up, we have a high number uh, of electrodes, and, and we showed that this, get, that this uh, is a clear, has a clear benefit on the recognition. Um, we showed also compared to the related work that a high number of gestures can actually be recognized using, using EMG, even if those gestures are, are very similar in motion. Oops. And um, we also showed that the shift estimation strongly improves the cross-session uh, recognition. Both methods work basically equally well and the data set is publicly available under the, the link, which is also given in the paper, and maybe you don't start downloading it right now. It's 12 gigabytes in, in size. And um, the data set for, for future work, I mean, the data set, there are a lot more possibilities than what we showed in this uh, initial uh, publication, since, for example, uh, you can look at, uh, try to apply source separation techniques um, to really find the, uh, a relation between the observations you do and the, the sources in, 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 I mean, the different muscles that, that are actually involved. And um, yes, and the work was supported by Google through a Google Research Award. So thanks, and I'm happy to take any questions. Daniel Ashbrook from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Very cool work. Um, I'm curious Thanks. if you took a look at all at uh, when you were reducing the number of electrodes, which particular electrode locations worked the best? Okay, when when we look at that, it's uh, there is not like a clear pattern, but you see it's uh, out of the uh, main activity uh, clusters, but you can't. Um, see like a clear mapping between like the first electrodes fit to the to what you think is the is the eight involved muscles mm -hmm. so but we didn't really did that in a in an analytical analytical form it just occurs to me to wonder if uh if then there were a set of electrodes that worked the best, if then you could uh, in the future just implant the electrodes in your arm and have a really nice portable interface that way. Yeah, that would <laughs> be quite nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs>